review. Our go live is March 25th. So that over that weekend, uh, when we come back Monday, all the changes will be live. The first change everybody should be aware of is the SEO legacy transaction interface. Over the December and October releases, Fiscal has been communicating with SEO legacy. And now SEO legacy will be communicating with Fiscal. So hopefully that'll save you some extra work. Uh, for APAR, there's going to be some updates to CalAders. We know that in October you were received a, a change and then it's to change it again to hopefully make your lives easier. And then we also have some changes to the payroll accounts receivable process. You might have heard some of that. Uh, some minor changes to offsets and you'll see some new balances in uh, the CTS bank account page. So for the impacted user roles, if any of you are who are here or online, or if you're a liaison, the people that are going to be impacted by this are going to be your processors and approvers for AP, AR, and GL. And so we want to make sure that every, every processor and approver in your department is aware of these changes as we make them. And then if any departments updates for these users, you can always use the identity self-service portal. All right, so let's get into the first impacted business process. Here, we have the SEO legacy transaction interface. So fiscal departments will no longer need to create catch up or SEO initiated journals in fiscal. So when SEO sends you those SEO JEs for the transaction codes 35, 37, or 38, you no longer need to create GL journals to mimic what is in SEO legacy. These will get interfaced in to Fiscal from SEO Legacy automatically. And we do know that sometimes uh, departments, when they do this, will need to make sure that these GL journals will be at the lower level of detail. And so to record the transaction to that, or reclassify that transaction, uh, you'll need to do that just creating an additional GL journal. Question? Um, how are you guys going to handle the budget date for these journals and are we going to make sure that they actually get posted to the right fiscal budget year? I'd like to introduce Anthony Trong, our GLSME. Uh, so the way the budget dates are going to work is um, if the transaction date is uh, greater than the last date to encumber, then the interface has logic to um, put the last date to encumber. Okay, because the last milestone interface is, wasn't working correctly and I'm not sure if it's been fixed. Mm -hmm. And the budget dates were wrong on 99% of our journals. Um, so as far as I can see, it's working for uh, all the types of transactions uh, that we've um, done UAT on. Um, do you have specific, well, you said 99%, but. 99% of all of our journals for our paper claim schedules have posted to the wrong budget date and they haven't been fixed yet. So they posted to 2018 when they should have been 2017. Okay. You said it picks the last date of the budget date to encumber? The, like the last encumbering, the latest encumbering date? So, uh, so how would that work with continuous funds? Which would, make, which would be why 99% of our so items are wrong then. No, for a continuous, um, the budget date, it, like the year is uh, 2099, right? So it's not greater than the, the accounting date is not greater than the last date to encumber. So it would just be a current date or uh, like the, the, the actual date. Okay. Um, is there any way that we can see that in testing before you guys actually roll it out and we have a bunch of stuff that needs to be corrected? So we have it encumbered and we paid the transaction out of a prior year, prior budget period. Mm -hmm. And then if you're using a current budget date, then you're actually posting it to 2018 when really we paid it out of 2017. Th that programming may not work. Okay, uh, we'll take that back. Hi, Tom. 
in the scenario and we'll test it. We've already, I've already filed a ticket for the step no. for milestone three. Right, but I'm, I'm just saying we want to make sure, you know, if you guys have s specific scenarios that you know have already had issues, send it into the team, um, and then we'll make sure that it gets uh, regression, regression tested. But I can't send in a ticket for hundreds and hundreds of items. So I've but, got a ticket filed for... But you have scenarios that you already know are, are failing uh, mm -hmm. and have had issues with the budget date. So we want to make sure that we ca capture that when we do our regression testing. Yeah, okay. you can give us ticket numbers too. You know my email address. Send I it do. to me and I'll forward it to you. All right, I'll send okay. you the ticket number. Okay. As far as I understand, when a system inbound a journal in the KK commitment control is budget checked correctly. But when it inbound to the GL journal, the budget date always day future or the last day like June 30, 2019. So what we see, I don't, I don't think we see a problem seeing the KK commitment control hit correctly. It's just the GL journal is always day that way. So therefore, when you notice the GL journal always say bypass, bypass budget check, that's the purpose. But in a KK world, you're correct. You hit into the right budget pot. So I don't, to me, you know, we don't, we don't see a problem. Yeah. But, you know, as far as your expenditure hit in the right budget period and the commitment control, that's all you care. But when the inbound comes to the GL journal, the budget is always dated like current or June 30th, 2019. But that is a general ledger. Yeah. We know that every department has different business processes, so um, if you have issues, then we'd like to help make sure that this is working for everybody. I just wanted to confirm, in this release, is the $0 voucher affected in any way? Do we still continue $0 vouchers as um, through the December release? As far as I know, there are no changes to the $0 voucher. Thank you. I wanted to give everybody a quick update. Uh, the presentation you're seeing today, especially for the folks online, you'll be able to find it on our SEO integrated solution page under the March 2019 Change Impact Workshop. And then for the folks here, if you can pull it up on your phone. Sorry we weren't able to get this out yesterday. Apologize for that. OK. So. In the October and December releases, as you've heard, we've already created a, a suite of interfaces that go from FISCAL to SEO Legacy. Uh, these interfaces have to do with eFITs or remittance advice corrections, um, correcting a voucher. You know, now you're going to use a, a journal voucher. And then finally, there are GL journals in FISCAL are now work flowing to SEO if they affect cash and or appropriation. So as a reminder, as many transactions as possible should be posted in FISCAL. Any of these transactions you're doing, the ideal goal, especially to reduce some of the issues you might be having, would be to do the transaction initially in FISCAL. There's no need to send in paper because now these transactions will interface to SEO legacy. Uh, SEO wants everybody to know that the paper transaction request should only be sent to SCO in exception cases. All right, then we have a question. Um, what about CLOs? Will those be interfacing into Fiscal? Yes, we're going to get into that a little bit later in the presentation. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Function goes live on 325. Does this mean we will only have partial of a month's transaction posted to FISCAL? Uh, so these are the transaction codes uh, that affect FISCAL uh, departments that will be interfaced um, on, in the, with the March release. Uh, there will, will be other uh, transaction codes um, brought in by the same interface uh, with future releases. For example, um, 36 is for non-fiscal. I guess I shouldn't bring that up, but that's coming in April, and then uh, TC29s will be coming uh, next fiscal year. 
Uh, just to clarify, I think the question was, is it so because our functionality is going live on March 25th, is it only all the transactions to March 25th are going to be in the system? Right. Okay. Sorry. Um, so this is just going to bring in uh, new transactions that are posting uh, after go live. It won't uh, be retroactive. Thank you. And then for departments that are configured to project-based operating budgets, they are unable to reclass vouchers and GEs for state funds because they're interfacing with that project activity values. Reverse the inbound um, TX. How can we reclass? Um, so I'm not sure if um, something's wrong with the maybe default projects in that case or something. Uh, we'll, we'll take that back and look into it. Just to quickly go over how the SEO transaction interface works. Any paper that is sent to SEO. Hold on, Corey, we have one more. Oh, okay. uh, for those transactions, catch up transactions that will not be posted by March 25th, do we have to make sure that those will be posted before that date, that cutoff date, so that there will be no, what do you call it, enhancement rule that will be made on, on fiscal that will impact those prior to your March 25th uh, enhancement? So if I understand it, the question is, do we need to post all of our catch-ups by March 25th? Uh, so I don't see any reason why um, every, there needs to be a hard deadline or anything like that. Um, you can still record catch-up transactions as GL journals um, after uh, go live. Okay. One more. Um, please repeat what budget date is used for continuous continuing appropriation. Uh, so the budget date for those will be the actual transaction date um, from Legacy. Okay. So as you guys, in the exception cases, you guys do send paper TC, with TC codes 35, 37, or 38. Those will automatically interface from SEO Legacy to Fiscal during the nightly batch. And you'll still receive the paper SEO JEs. You just will have those for your records. So uh, be not, keep an eye out for those. If you would like to see those transactions that have been interfaced, you can go on to the KK activity and run a query. So if you just go to Query Viewer, we'll show you that in the next slide. And then as needed, you can reclassify your transactions. There was a question about the $0 voucher previously. You'll still do that uh, if you need to you know, include all of your supplier information. Um, you'll do a GL journal for the GL journals that are coming in. That way, if you need to uh, get your project or, uh, program, project or any other departmental chart fields on there, you can do that. Um, there's also the $0 deposit, which is a correction in AR, if you need to reclassify any type of deposit information to that lower level of detail. Uh, for the most part, you should just do these transactions in Fiscal, uh, as we said in the prior slide. Uh, and then make sure you don't create these entries again, because then you'll have duplicate entries. They'll come in twice. You'll see them twice, and your reconciliation will be wrong. And that includes CLO. And just for so everyone's aware that any transaction that is created in Fiscal interface to SEO, the, the coming back the interface will exclude those. So that way the books are always matching. Uh, there, are, there could be potentially exception cases in the future uh, where you'll need to do a TC47 um, paper. That's just uh, you know, in emergency situations. or you know. So for the, those need to be done in AR today and the interface through the approval process in AR. Any other questions? Hopefully, these not having to enter in your CLO transactions will save you guys some work 
in the long run. So. All right, so this is the query you can run, the ZZKK activity, uh, including PC info. Um, this query may be updated when we go live uh, to include some you know, additional information. Uh, or we're, we're also looking to identify any other kind of reporting tools that departments can use to make sure that uh, you are aware of any, any activity that SCO is doing on your behalf. Question? Yeah, there's an online question. Will we be notified when the catch-up posts in Fiscal? The, the interface is going to run nightly, so every day uh, there will be new items that are coming in. As far as I'm aware, you'll still get those, I mean, you'll still get the paper SCO JE, so by the time you get those, that will have already posted in Fiscal. Um, and if you need to go and review them, you'd want to use this query. Thank you. And then what about CC30? Has that automatically interfaced to Fiscal, or will it? Uh, so TC30 is uh, being interfaced into Fiscal. Um, that should have already started uh, back in October. Um, yeah, so that was bringing in them into the AR module. Thank you, Anthony. How does this query differ from the DFQKK01 query? As far as I know, that they're the same. There's a lot of different queries out there. Um, this is just one that you can use. If you have one that you like, uh, then you can continue to do that. All right, we have one more question in the room. On TC30 for Federal Trust Fund, we're currently having a problem wherein we set up the AR prior to uh, the draw and then when the money comes in with CRE, SEO, SEO release a CRE, it doesn't liquidate the AR. Will this interface resolve that? Because right now we're submit, we have a ticket and we're asking fiscal or SEO to close so we can, it will liquidate the AR that we set up for that draw, and it's not, system's not doing that. But with interface, is that included? Okay, so um, this new interface won't um, help with that uh, TC30 um, issue because that's a separate interface. But um, if I'm understanding you correctly, um, the CC30s are being interfaced, but they're just um, being directly journaled rather than applying to the AR payment. Is that correct? Or to the AR item, I mean. It should apply to the AR, but it's not. It, the system is not doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, that's something that will need to be resolved with uh, that TC30 interface um, because that's just a separate process. And so I'm sorry for. This functionality, it went live in December, and we have a different team who's supporting that. Uh, they're not in the room today. Just to let you know, it's only on federal fund draw that's not liquidating the AR. At the same time, uh, do we have a process uh, resolution already on the 1944 account? Uh, we'll have to take that one away. We don't have the correct SMEs in the room to answer that question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if, if you could come after so we could write down and make sure we have that question. Uh, we'd, okay. I just wanted to comment on the, on the federal AR. Make sure you have the reason configured to include federal. That was the issue with our department. The, for the ARs, the transfer, the federal transfers in, the reason that our, our department it was not applying to the ARs because we had to have the AR reason uh, federal configured into the BUs that have federal. You have that already.
question uh, regarding the interface and and the reports queries that we get gather information. Is there any source code or any indicator that we could identify those records generated or coming from interface from SEO legacy to Fiscal? And that's why I said we're looking at updating either this query or identifying a new one that you can use that would include that kind of information. Okay, we will be able to identify those. That, that's going to be our goal to give departments the ability to do so. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll let you know more information. I'd say the best uh, avenue to learn more about those would be the town halls that are coming up. I'll get, get into those later in the presentation. Okay, a couple more online questions. Can you explain CLO transactions? My understanding is CLO transaction is distributed by LD module, so we don't post CLO transactions. Do you mean gross pay journal that we need to post after LD is run? Uh, yeah, could you repeat that question? Sorry. Yeah. Can you explain CLO transactions? My understanding is CLO transaction is distributed by LD module, so we don't post the CLO transaction. Do you mean gross pay journal that we need to post after LD is run? The CLO uh, GL journal that we are posting is currently, you see, in the tab run. Uh, for most departments, it posted to 99 account. As I understand, departments are posting it as a catch-up transaction today. So we are bringing this transaction. Actually, is when labor distribution run, it would debit the ultimate program and credit your 99 account for most departments. So this posting is to clear your 99 account entry. So what we have in the system is the ultimate funding. Any question? So uh, one more thing about the query and report. SEO has de um, designed the report, uh, one report that is going to open to all departments, which is, um, uh, is a very good tool for your reconciliation. So what the report is doing is that you can run it by interface. Uh, we will have the fiscal uh, module document number and the SEO document number so that you can see the direct mapping for um, uh, both systems. And that goes to your question. So we're going to release more reporting. I'd say we'll demonstrate that, I think, at a town hall. And that, that is Carmen Fernandez. Thank you, Carmen. Carmen, I think this might be a follow-up question. Process. So does that mean that we will not need to post the SEO CL0 to the clearing account in fiscal account 510000 and 11091100? That is correct. Thank you. Okay. That should be a good benefit for departments, less work. Another question, after going live, will SEO type CTU piece of catch up SEO initiated not be available in the GL journal? The catch up SEO initiated transaction type will still be there. You know, like we said before, there's no reason that you can't enter these after March 25th, so you'll still need a place to enter them. Thank you. And in the future, for if there's any reason you'll need to do something that's not going to interface um, that SEO sends you for other PCs, for example, you can still use that. Can you leave the CR interface with incomplete status so department can modify the deposit to apply deposits to AR instead of doing a $0 deposit to adjust? Um, we'll talk to the AR team. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned about CLO that they will be automatically interfaced. Are you talking about the payroll AR invoice that it will be interfaced? If you're talking about the payroll AR collections, that is a separate item. So payroll AR is... Um, this side, we will not get into the camera, right? <laughs> um, payroll AR is a separate extension uh, that is coming as an APO. So we will post an APO to the GL module, and we have a separate process to liquidate the AR item. But um, we will look into that and give you guys more information later on. Yeah, we have some more slides on that later in the presentation.
Thank you, Carmen. All right, it's good to see you guys are you know happy in one of these sessions. <laughs> Uh, there was a question on what is the query name and if there is a query or reconciliation job aid to reconcile SCLO to fiscal labor distribution. So with this new release, you'll no longer have to reconcile because these, these transactions will be interfaced for you and run through LD automatically. Um, as far as the report that you need to run, uh, like I said, the best place for that would going to be to tune into one of the town halls that we'll have uh, in just a few weeks. The town halls are typically not the same content. We do do repeat quite a bit for users who are unable to attend one, um, but we'll get more into that later in the presentation. Same functionality. So let me elaborate a little bit. We still need to reconcile just in case something fall out from the interface. So, but, but the report, the new report, you guys will be happy with it um, because you will see the direct mapping for the fiscal and SEO document number. So then you're not going to find a needle from the haze, you know. Um, so we'll see. When we release that report, um, we'll see everybody's feedback. I'm sure you guys will be happy. Because I did reconciliation before, and I know this report is very helpful. Thank you, Carmen. And then there's a question on half sheets and ARO JEs. We will get into AR functionality in a little bit, so we can address that later. All right, I'll be moving on to the calculators expenditure reclassifications. I'd like to do, introduce Eleanor Alvarez. Breathe in, breathe out. That was a lot, right? Okay. <laughs> so first, calculators. this functionality coming in March will not require maintenance on your calculators record. So yay. Um, and just for those, just to kind of make sure we're all on the same page, calculators will continue to do everything that it's doing. And as an intro to this, Calators right now does the TC38 on a daily basis. We all agree, right? And that TC38 in March will start coming into Fiscal. Because we also post and record the expenditures from the claims that your employees submit, we needed to do something, right? Because then it would be overstated, right? Because I'd have TC38s and the expenditures posting. What do we do? So this is what we're, we're offering here. So we're going to do a reclassification. It's going to come with a couple of things. Um, number one, um, when the TC38 comes in, it's going to come before your expenditure vouchers. It always does, right? Because I got to fund, I got to fund your warrants that go out. So once that TC38 is posted, that posted TC38 now will interface into Fiscal. So that will be coming in first, okay? And on that GL journal that comes in. It will have that GER number, that document number from SEO, that will come in. So that's another nice thing that's coming in. A lot of departments have asked for that, that information to come in. Now, then about two days later, the matching expenditure file that comes in from calculators that's usually sent down to your other in, um, interfaces, um, that will come about two days later. And what it will do is that the GL108 or that legacy TC38 will be matched with the expenditure and it will make sure that the high-level appropriation, your funds, your sub-fund, your programs, your categories, your elements, they match what was posted in legacy. Okay? And because they need to validate and make sure that it matches SEO, um, those values, once they're validated, will be locked. So right now, um, I know that some of the departments are trying to clear some of these errors, and so they're asking the FSC to unpost, and so that way they can modify so if you unpost, you will not be able to touch those appropriation values, okay, because they have been validated, right? So SEO has posted that information into Fiscal. It's now been validated when the expenditure voucher comes in, so I'm locking it because that's what was posted in SEO. I'm going to stop right there. So we're good? We understand? So programs funds, sub-funds, those will be locked. So if you, if you, even if you unpost and you'll see that they will be grayed out, you won't be able to touch them. 
because that is a confirmation to you if for some reason you were to request an unposting of that voucher that those have been validated through this process and they match SEO. So that's a Benny actually, right? You and SEO match, Fiscal and SEO match. Any questions? Yes. I was like, Jamie, <laughs> you always have a very good question. <laughs> oh, sorry. So, and I'm just, maybe it's wishful thinking. Okay. Okay, because um, I like to dream big. So, <laughs> will they auto-approve then? Make so, my life easy. Come on. So, all of this. these expenditure vouchers already come in pre-approved. They don't require okay. any approval workflow. So, so, just a little, another background on CalEater's expenditure vouchers, because the payments and everything, the approval workflow has been done outside of Fiscal, they are created in Fiscal, already approved usually already with a budget check valid, right? So all that stuff is already taken care of for you. There is no approval workflow on these vouchers at okay. all. Okay, just making sure. So, okay. You have another question in the back. While we're getting the mic, there's an online one. Can we adjust non-appropriation values? Yes. So, um, so the first part here on the left-hand side of your, I mean, on, on here on the presentation, that was just to confirm what we're restricting. So before we didn't restrict that because we weren't doing anything to really truly validate, but now we are, so we need to lock those values down. The other department COAs, yes, you will be able to modify. Because sometimes when the, some of you are using speed chart, yeah. right? Some of, you are, are, some of you are using that speed chart value and maybe, it came in with a project activity that did pass, but then you're like, oh, I need to change it, right? So that kind of leads me into the second area right here, the second column. I need you to submit the journal vouchers to properly change those, okay? So, I mean, because what, what the CalEaders expenditure voucher came in with was values that you provided. The speed chart actually had values that passed and they were posted into the fiscal system, or fiscal system. And so if you need to change it, that will be a journal voucher. Um, so is this interface going to fix the problem like that we're having where on certain days, say January 16th, everything that came through and, you know, we have it that we show SEO paid, say maybe 10 claims. I've got six claims that I can see in Fiscal for. I cannot see. They're not in voucher build error. They have seemed to have disappeared. Is this interface going to help fix that issue? So we are actually looking at that issue in production now. So she is correct. There has been a an error defect that we have found where the interface coming in from SEO is complete, it has all the information, but Fiscal for some reason is not creating all of them. So we are working on that so that way we can rerun those transactions in the system um, because we don't want you to have to do that, we'll, we'll recreate them in the system. So we are collecting those, you aren't the only one, so it is a known fact and we are working on that. Yes, you have another question. Will this uh, interface also correct the missing payments, missing suppliers that we need to send tickets to SEO to correct as well? So the missing suppliers, we'll, we'll get those each at one at a time. So we have issues with miss missing suppliers. Suppliers are usually because they are not some a civil service employee. If you are a civil service employee, we have an automation built into the interface that will already create that supplier for you. No problem, comes in, matches the SSN and the LD, creates a supplier record, posts, right? No problem. Um, but if you are not a civil service employee, meaning that that information doesn't come in from SCO's employee history file, then yes, it will error out and say that it is a missing supplier ID. If that occurs, then the department is responsible for creating a supplier in the system. So to be proactive, if you know there are going to be claims that are going to be interfacing into Fiscal for these non-state employees, go ahead and just submit the supplier record request. CMG is pretty good. They're turning around those approvals pretty quickly. And as far as the payments are concerned, if they are missing payments, it depends on the situation. What I've seen in production is that um, the, the voucher was created, it, it was put on hold, and what sometimes I'm looking at when I'm looking, and what I'm doing is what you guys can do too. Um, I go into calculators, I validate what the claim looked like, and some of these are sometimes 100% travel advance recoveries. And if the travel advance isn't available or set up in Fiscal, which are prepaids, then it just sits there because it's waiting to apply to a prepaid. 
So make sure that those prepaids are in there, especially the new ones that just came in, the new agencies. If you didn't create all those prepaids in advance, they're going to catch up with you now. But there's, it's on one-on-one -on -one basis. So if you're having something outside of that, I can take that offline and, and research that with you. But I've been seeing a lot of that lately. They're missing prepaid. Any other questions? Yes. Our department has an issue with the reference number being wrong because we had a department split and we actually have an appropriation that is not meant for calories expenditures that somehow the profile of the employee is correct and has the right reference but SEO continues to post to an incorrect reference. So you would validate against an incorrect reference because that would match what SEO has and then you would lock that transaction. So we need to fix reference number on quite a bit of GER journals. Well, I missed one tiny little step that might make you feel at ease. So if the reference in SEO, so when TC38s come in out of Cal Aiders, sometimes they work with the departments and they do modify that original appropriation that came in from the voucher, right? Because they will work with you. For some reason, they'll, they'll call you and say, hey, this needs to be a reference two instead of a one. Um, those, those transactions where the SEO modified that TC38 entry, that validation, when it comes in and does the validation between the Calator's voucher and the GL-108, it's whatever SEO posted. It'll change it. So if there is a modification to what came in from Calator's, it'll change it to what SEO approved. So that helps a little bit. Is that still outside of what? What's happening doing? with us is, I don't know how this happened. We've had to go so far as to delete the employee's Calator's account mm -hmm. and recreate it in order to get the reference to fix, because if you look at the profile, it's got a reference number, but somehow SEO is posting to a reference that does exist and has money, but does that money is not for calculators expenditures. And it's only got about $12,000 in it. And so what's happening is I have not on purpose fixed any of these so that there is no more money in the appropriation and SEO has been forced to fix the reference on their own. But I have probably 15 GERs that I need to fix that I'm holding off on fixing because they, every time I free up money by correcting something, they post to it again. So there's only, you know, a couple dollars in there now. Yeah. So. We get record check problems on all of those too. Okay. So and so then, I want to know, would we do, so right now my solution would be to do, I guess, a GL transaction request in Fiscal. After March 25th, it will change to a calculator's journal voucher, or is reference not even a chart field we're allowed to modify in a journal voucher? You will, but then it'll workflow. So well, let's take this offline. I, I get what you're saying, and I think we need to get involved SARD. So I, yes, we will take that away. Okay. I will, we'll work with SARD on that one. I need to work with SARD. Hi, Hazel. Hi, Eleanor. <laughs> so I, I just want to make it like under, understand the process. So Calator's interface is still coming in creating vouchers. Correct. GL108 is bringing the, the same legacy transaction posting to GL? It's bringing in a TC38 that actually is Calator's issues a TC38 every single day. On that, at that date, it basically transfers that over to SARD. SARD transfers the monies from the departments into our 0942 account, which is where all the payments are issued from, and that's for the ORF replenishments and for the employees' payments. And so that TC38, those debits and credits are coming in through this GL108 or the legacy transaction interface that's coming in. Because we can't, when the expenditures finally do hit two days later, the matching ones, we can't have it overstated, so we're going to do a reclass. We're going to do a reclass on behalf. We're going to, we'll have more details about the reclass okay. and what the accounting entries are going to look like in the next um, presentation we have about this. I don't have enough presentation. I don't have enough screenshots yet. Okay. It's still in development, but that is the intent. It'll reclass it. Reclass meeting reverse from so, the GL at the high level? Yeah, because it, remember it's, it's hitting the 0942 and so we, yeah, we need okay. to reclass it with the expenditures. Okay, a couple of online questions. Can you repeat how to resolve the duplicate of GER vouchers and TC30 journal interface? Duplicate GERs. Mm. Oh, maybe 
Carmen will know about this one. Because what they meant is like if you are bringing the interface for the voucher, for the calculator voucher, and then at the same time you're bringing the GER that is duplicating. So the question is asking you how are you going to resolve this, you know, because you're posting in the GL and you're posting in the AP. Right. So part of the accounting reclassifications are going to show that to you. Again, I don't have the details quite yet. We're still in development, but that will take care of that. So that way you won't be, you won't have duplication. This is the whole purpose of why we had to do this. We needed to bring in the TC38s for calculators, but we needed to make sure there were no duplicates or overstating. And so that's why we're doing the reclass. The next presentation will have far more accounting entries. I'll make sure of it so that way you can see it. Um, and then that way, maybe it'll explain. I mean, I got a rough draft of one, and that just was too much. <laughs> so, so we need to, to make sure that it has exact entries, account values, all that stuff, so that way you knew exactly what was going on. We will give you more detail later. OK, thank you. Is service location considered a non-appropriation value? Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and more, is project slash activity ID chart field considered a non -approp? Yes. OK. And can we add project activity ID to Calator's voucher if it is in voucher error build? Yes. OK. As long as you didn't do a combo edit to say that it was specific combo edit, but yes, it'll work. OK. Thank you. Yep. And then the last part is the warrants. So I'm going to go to the next one. Is that next? Oh, there you go. So these, you know how you get these all the time in your mail? They're to your department accounting office. So it's just better to start here. Some of, you, some of the departments here probably receive one a day. <laughs> some of them are maybe once a week. It just depends. And what these are, they're addressed to the, um, to the department accounting orfs, and they basically are the sum of the travel advance recoveries for a date, okay? And on the actual um, warrant, and I kind of hid out a couple things. Sorry, franchise, I used an example. Uh, <laughs> um, what, what's available on there is your ORF ID, your calculator's ORF ID, and then it has the um, warrant number, and there's a report, actually, in calculators that you kind of took a look at all the details, right? It tells you exactly what was recovered, the travel advance ID. It tells you the sum, and that sum at the bottom of the report is exactly the sum on this warrant, right? We're good? All right. So when um, October came through, we know that we needed to do all your deposits in Fiscal, right? Treasurers have said, hey, you've got to recognize all your deposits into Fiscal. And so now um, that means that included these warrants, okay? So there's a job aid out there right now that tells you that when you ha make a deposit, there's some instructions that tell you, hey, use a client ID, um, make sure that it might be easier for you to identify that these are deposits for calculators. And then it also told you to reverse it. And you're like, bummer, why did I even do it in the first place, right? So, but it was the only way that we could do it until we had this solution in place. It's just until now. So in March, once you do those um, deposits of the warrants, then we have those accounting entries that I keep talking about. We're going to work with that. Okay, right now the, um, the, there's a, what they call a cash accounting extension. It's internal to Fiscal. And what it does is that for you on your behalf, um, it doesn't really wait for the deposit. It automatically moves the accounting entries so that way the warrant basically is funds from the warrant account go into your ORF in Fiscal. It does that for you automatically, okay? And that's why right now when you deposit the real warrant, they're telling you to reverse it because Calator's already did it for you. Otherwise, you're going to be overstated, okay? Now, fast forward to March. That automation that we were doing of automatically replenishing is going away, and you will have to deposit this and make sure that if you don't, then your ORF will not be, your, your ORF cash will not be increased. So... It's back to, you know, good old deposits. Make sure that you recognize them in Fiscal, right? And that automation will go away. I'm saying that twice because I know you guys are used to that, especially if we've been live since 2013. Calators has been doing this automation for a very long time. But, of course, we didn't have the deposit functionality in here, and we needed to make sure that we recognize that. 
So those accounting entries are going away. I have a question. We are not a calculators department. Okay. Um, how does that affect non-calculators? Oh, no problem. Not at all. Not okay. at all. If Thank you are you. not a calculators, if you're not doing those vouchers, nope, you won't impact you at all. Uh oh, I see Mickey. I just want to clarify that um, this also means we have to clear all those outstanding travel advances, correct? So the travel advances, so um, the interface does a couple of things. So when it creates the voucher, it automatically set, sets up a payment schedule for travel advance recovery. And I don't know if you've ever seen one where there's been splits, where it automatically creates. The first payment is usually what was paid by warrant. And then the second one is actually where it gets applied to the prepaid. That will continue. That will, no problem. Okay. Yep. So we don't have to manually clear. No, travel that will advances. be done automatically. That doesn't go away. That continues in fiscal. I wouldn't do that to you guys. No. What is the account that we're supposed to be using now for depositing these calculators checks instead of using uncleared collections like we do now and then we're supposed to reverse it? What will it be? Will it be refunds clearing? Will it be or if advanced travel advance. I'm going to defer to Mark okay. <laughs> or Chase. Chase, do you have that answer for us? Okay. So what? So we are creating a new account. Still, like I said, it's still in development. This is just I'm telling you the highlights, right, of what's going on. There's going to be a new account value that will be introduced for this reclass. When we have it, we will definitely share it. It hasn't even been created yet. All right. Um, the job aid that I keep referring to is right here on the bottom of this slide. Um, it's 393, the handling of the calculators or if replenishment warrant. That tells you exactly what to do with them right now. When we make this modification, it will be updated to be in sync with what we're proposing in March. So we'll do that when that goes live. We'll update it. So what's the effect when you don't deposit the warrant in the same month that it was issued out? Now or after March? Now. Now, in fiscal, you're good. Right, because right now the, cal the, the cash extension is already replenishing you right now automatically. But once March comes in, if you choose not to deposit those or replenishment warrants that come from calculators, your cash will go down. It won't be replenished. So you guys are getting a nice benefit right now, but once this is introduced, you will have to make sure that you deposit those warrants. Yeah, so the question was is that um, why aren't these done EFT or direct transfer? We tried a long time ago, and I, I think Calators is on, is probably listening. Um, we tried many times to do that, but because it is a third party, so we're everything, all your funds are going into a 0942 account, which is a special deposit fund. If we did that, it was coming out of the 0942, but we would have no details related to it in legacy. So it was very hard for us to do the direct transfers. So that's why they said, okay, at this time, we weren't, they weren't going to recognize it. So we continued with the warrants. Now, in the replacement project, when calculators is replaced, that is one of the requirements. So that way, we don't have to deal with the warrants anymore. It will be a direct transfer. It is a requirement. Yeah. Yeah, so with the replacement project, I think you'll, you're going to see a lot of enhancements. A lot of the things that Fiscal was introducing as an enhancement will be also integrated into the replacement project. Right now, I'm hearing 22. Yes. Does this activity only affect the TA, not all the prepaid vouchers? Am I correct? Say it again. Does this only affect the TA? Travel, Travel advance, yeah, not all the prepaid vouchers. That's the question. Yeah, it's 
It's just the TAS. So CalEaders comes in. If you have travel advances through CalEaders, they actually are built in Fiscal as a prepaid voucher. And in the invoice ID field, it starts with the TAF ID that is generated from CalEaders. That's how you know that is a CalEaders. The other a unique identifier is on the summary page. On the right hand side, it says origin, and it'll equal TAV as in Victor. TAV. That's how you know it was interfaced from CalEaders. So this basically just kind of summarizes the deposit. Um, you will be responsible for that. Um, the deposit will be done. Again, we will provide more detailed information, hopefully, in the next presentation that we have so we can show you maybe what the new account value is and how the accounting entries are going to look. I don't think there's any more. Is that the last one? Oops. Yeah. So the reclassify, so just in high level, um, the, the, if you create an AP journal voucher that modifies any of those um, values, it has to go through approvals and then depending on what kind of um, change you're making, so if it is a non-appropriation, it will not go to SARD, but if it is, it will go to SARD. It just depends on what you're changing. So if it's a fund that you're changing or a program, yes, it will workflow to SARD, but um, if it's just a project or activity, it will not. And then once that information is um, done here in Fiscal, there will be an interface, an evening interface at the end of the day that will interface that information back to SEO Legacy. So again, I know there's, it's just high level, but in the, next, in the next presentation, I'll have more detail for you. So any more questions with CalEaters? We're good. And I'm sure that I'll be getting emails <laughs> with additional questions. All right. Thank you. One more question. Yeah. The interface expenditure amount in detail will match deposit calculators or warrant amount. How to list the detail interface expenditure information. Okay, I'm, we're going to need clarification um, yeah. on this question. And then there was a general question on where are the slides available. They're already posted on our SOSO integrated solution page. So Corey can demonstrate that real quick. If you're on the Fiscal, if you're on the Fiscal page, so if you just go to fiscal.ca.gov, at the top here you'll see your ribbon where you can navigate to the resources page. Under the resources, this is the SEO, STO integrated solution page for end users. This is where it's always been, so hopefully this isn't new for you. And then for our March release, you'll see all items related to March release here, and that includes the presentation that we're looking at today. Thank you. One thing I forgot to add, and this was something that I was really excited about. So on the CalEaders expenditure vouchers, a lot of you over the years have asked, can I have the matching GER number? So that way I don't have to go looking for it. We are putting it on the voucher. So it's going to be on the, um, we're going to put it under the related documents, I think, field. It's the second tab in. And in there you have information if it's like a P or whatever. We're going to introduce a new section that will match the information that came in from the, uh, the journal that came in. So you will have the GER number as well as the Fiscal journal number. So you'll have all that detail. That's coming in forward in March. Okay. Yay. Yes. And I think, uh, like Eleanor said, we'll have some more information about how that looks, um, more screenshots, maybe even a demonstration on what the GER looks like. I know there's a new page for it, so I think you all will be really happy with that. All right, earlier in the presentation, we received some questions around payroll ARs. Uh, we know those are a big thing that departments do every day. So. When we go live in March, all payroll system collections will interface to Fiscal from Legacy, and they will post against the employee AR. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is, well, 
Um, so there's some um, ongoing discussion regarding this topic. Right now the plan is actually um, starting March 25th. Uh, the APOs and AR0 uh, transactions will be um, posting to GL and then uh, we'll have a business process for you to apply to um, the AR item. We have a question? Let's say that your AR, that we, well, we're not able to post all of our ARs by March 25th. What will happen to the collections that are coming through if, they're, if the error is not set up? Okay, um, so like I said, um, there's, um, there have been some changes since this slide was prepared. Um, basically, um, I don't think that will be a problem because um, all, th all that's happening uh, by interface um, starting March 25th is that uh, GL journals will be created. Um, so you will still have to, um, if, like if the AR item is not already created in advance, you'll have to create it and then you'll follow the business process that we'll have for you. To um, up to close that uh, AR item. Right, there's going to be I, a, I a lot of questions about how this is going to work. So I'm going to go through what our current solution is and let pref preface that with this is a solution that we're still ironing out all of the details for. Um, you, some of the departments may have heard that there was a task coming. Uh, there, there's still going to be a task coming. Um, the dates of the launch of this right now, it's tentatively planned for March 25th, but we're looking at giving departments more time um, so that that is on the table. Uh, and right now, the way a matching process would work is all of your ARs would need to be updated with the appropriate AR number and then when we looked at a lot of the ARs that are already out there, some of them didn't have the pay period, so they would need to be updated with those two items. And then after we iron out all of our details, we will send you task tech 907. I'll go a little bit more into that later. Um, like I said, so some of the timing, we know that it's a, it's a big effort, uh, so we're gonna, we'll get you more information about that, and as well as what the impacts would be if you don't go live, all right, if you don't prepare all of your AR items in time. Uh, do you have any more questions? So just to be clear, we're going to have to reclassify those entries to the correct chart field values, correct? Yes. So the way that we set up our payroll AR is a little bit different. Um, we use um, not, yeah, it's unique to our department. So does it have to match exactly on the half sheet for it to match when the new waves come? So we know that departments, you know, uh, there's, let me just go to the next slide. There's a job aid out there, Fiscal 208, which gives you a naming convention for your AR items. We know that departments are oftentimes doing that differently to match their own departmental business processes. So as part of that, we are going to be releasing the task tech 907, and that task will be, we're creating a new field. I'll just go one four so you can see what that looks like on the screen. So this field BOL here on your AR items, that's going to be renamed to AR number. So you can continue naming your AR item as fits your departmental business process, and then you will have to enter in the AR number for, and I recommend you guys do this for all new uh, AR items that you're creating. Just that BOL field when we go live will be renamed. Um, so you can, you can do that today, just put in your AR number, and that has to match the half sheet. So for any new ones you have, I recommend as you create them, your AR units, um, whoever's these folks, the AR item uh, processors, go in there and just make sure for every new one they just put it there. Um, and the other thing is make sure you have your pay period on the pending item three. So those are two things that you need to do. And then for every pending or open item that's already out there, 
to make that easier for you, we, ha we have the task where you'll be, it's an Excel sheet that when you guys uh, fill out all the information, you can mass update all of your current pending or open air items. That'll, that'll be helpful. You don't have to go back into current ones and then update with those, but just any new ones going forward. And we have another question. And then just one more thing, after we go live, we, not only will BOL, BOL be renamed, it will be required. So that'll be a required field. Before we go live, it's still required, but uh, this is going to make it so it's explicitly required. I have two questions. First one is for the uh, matching of document number. If it's sometimes we do AR1234, AR01234, and we know that SEO is AR space, one, two, three, four. Do we need to, when we insert a zero, we still have to correct it? Uh, the, ha the number on half sheet is five digits. That five digit number will need to be exact in the half sheet or the BOL field for now. So if it's, there's a space, make, it, make the space instead of a zero. Because in, when we did the conversion, whatever is in the legacy is what we use in the conversion. Okay, so is this question, um, it, it sounds like you're talking about the AR0 document number, uh, the TC38 is, uh, I'm, no. The half sheet. So you're talking when you create the AR item. So Correct. instead of doing AR and then the five digit number, you add an additional zero there. Yes. So we have to understand because each department is different. We've done a, uh, uh, we did a query and see how each department is doing. It's so many different varieties. Some people, they add in three additional zeros. So for us, it's very hard to identify in which position that the AR number started. So that's why we have to do some kind of cleanup work. So um, I, 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 I don't know right now how we're going to reach out to the departments to clarify uh, in your AR item which part of the AR item number is actually your half sheet number. So we're trying to get this um, uh, clean up uh, first because by looking at SEO um, AR, um, the half sheet number, right? So we, we did that exercise. So we'll reach out to the departments uh, later. So if we cannot identify the actual a, a half sheet number. Yeah, because sometimes also we add suffixes if there are more than, if, if it's using more than one PCA or one service location. Yeah, and we split it. Understand that. So, so like, like I say, some people will use PAR and then the number, some people with A slash R, some people will use AAR, a, you know, all kinds of different variety, different combination. So we need to, you know, um, we reach out to the department and see how the naming convention is to figure this thing out. Okay. Yeah, I'll go over the task and what that looks like at a later time in the presentation. Okay, we have a lot of online questions. Maybe I'll just go over the task. Yeah, I think you should go over the task because it'll address a lot of the questions. All right, so every department will get a sheet like this. Yeah, you might be familiar with these tasks you did as you guys implemented. Uh, what you'll see is you'll have your two tabs, one for open items, and so we're going to extract by department, so you'll only see your departments, uh, all the open items and all the pending items out there. Some of these are very old, you know, some from, I think for the most part, uh, the most important ones are going to be anything that is in the current period. And then you'll have what your BU is, what you have named these AR items, whether that's, uh, you know, uh, one, two, three, four, five, or you have some digits around those AR item names. Some departments have their own business process they like to use, so they name it differently. Uh, and then you'll have your employee ID. That should be the same. You shouldn't really make any changes there. The item amount that is populated from Fiscal, that's whatever is in the item right now. And then on column F, and this is what you'll need to update, you need to be explicit with the five digit AR number from the half sheet. And so that, that needs to match the half sheet. Uh, so you can 
some departments will be able to do this. This is a, a five second you know, formula in Excel where you can just do all of them because you're formulaic about it. Some departments will have some items that they're not formulaic about it and you have to do some investigation. And so we know that that is going to take some time. Um, the last thing I want to mention is any area where a pay period has not been you know, entered, like for example this one, you'll need to make sure that there's a pay period there. How will this work? Once in a while we run into duplicate AR numbers because we have some really old ones. The system will only allow one number. That's why the pay period is so important. Mm -hmm. That's why those, those cannot be blank. You see I'm, there's a one blank here. That one will have to be filled in. And then if there's any AR items there that are really old, you can go back and close those uh, without filling out this task. Or you can fill out this task and we'll go ahead and upload this automatically. And I, as this communication or this task goes out, th there's going to be some more details. So ignore what I just said there. I think that was incorrect. But, <laughs> but uh, as we get this task out, like I said, it's not out yet. Uh, we'll have more details that will answer some of your additional questions about uh, how to go through those kind of those situations in between. Yeah, and just a small caveat, we are working internally to see if we can uh, ease the amount of work on the department. So we're working with our partner agencies to reduce the amount of work for you guys. But in the meantime, we wanted to give you a heads up that potentially you will be receiving a list of all of your open AR items, all the pending AR items, and you will have to go through and input the AR number and the uh, pay period to ensure, and then we'll do the match for you in the system. That's for all the ones that are in the system. And then the second part is for any new AR items that you're putting into the system going forward, use that BOL sheet. Um, and then additionally, make sure you're current with all, all of your AR items. Because if you're not, then when we go live, you're going to have to do a catch up for all of the AR items that are not current. And then some of the details about what situation or what would happen if you're not current. Those are still being ironed out, so uh, bear with us on that one. Just so that we can make sure that we're um, updating going forward with the correct information. On the pay period, um, we normally just do the month and year, but I saw on the, um, on the upload sheet you have like 01 as month, date, and, uh, month, day, and year. What do we want to put in there? Um, so I think the only part that we actually need is the year um, because it's just to kind of to eliminate the possibility of the duplicate uh, AR numbers from because because the numbers get uh, reset every year. So. so just go ahead and input like the date, the first, and, and then the year. Sorry, the month, the, the first, and the year. Yeah, as long as the year is correct, we should be good. You can continue following your current departmental business process. Okay, we have a couple of specific questions online. I received a payroll half sheet with zero dollars to be recovered from the employee. There is a gross amount indicated. Based on that information, the employee does not owe anything. Do we still post the half sheet? If there's nothing to owe, there's no, no, no reason to set up the AR. Because what are we collecting for? <laughs> I'm glad that I'm not in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. OK, so the answer to that was no, you don't need to post that half sheet. How will reverted year part items be handled? So, um, Carmen, cor correct me. Oh, okay. <laughs> take away. <laughs> okay, I'll mark that as a takeaway yeah, question. We'll, we'll have to take that one away and get back to you. Okay. Are, um, are these new field requirements needed for drawdown AR items as well? This is specifically for any entry type that is payroll AR or PAR. So it, this is only for those. Um, all the other AR items, it won't be required. Unless there's a reason for the AR to have a pay period. Um, but at least the AR number will only be for PAR. 
items. Okay. If the AR item is already closed, how will the APO transactions post to the AR item? Um, so basically, in, in all instances where um, the system wouldn't be able to identify an open item, it would post a GL journal. Okay, thank you. I think you might have just answered my question. They said that you don't have to post an AR item if it was zero on the half sheet, but all of them get an APO in addition to that half sheet that typically has to be posted. So if the APO comes in and we didn't post a PAR accounts receivable item, it's going to direct journal those? How is it going to know the funding and all of that if it does a direct journal, if it doesn't know, if it doesn't have an AR to post to? Um, so the APO comes in and we have to post it, typically. How is it going to know what to do if there's if it doesn't have an AR to post against, even though it's a zero dollar AR? So the um, the APO will like the TC thirty eight will just come in as a GL journal. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes on the APO, you will have some um, employee that not belong to your department that will get charged in there, and then you guys create an APC later. So how that that gonna work? How it gonna interface into? Yeah, the reverse, the, a, the APC reverse Would it the even show in fiscal, or is this gonna be? Non posted at all. Would you repeat the question, please? So, sometime on the APO, you will have some payroll AR from employee that not belong to your department or no longer in your department. So, later in the month, you got an APC to correct that transaction. Would that be posted to fiscal or it's not going to be posted to fiscal at all? It will post to fiscal. An in and a reversal? Yes. So what I believe is when you have an APO, the inbound create a GL journal to post the APO. And then there's another process to, to liquidate the receivable if there is one. But if there's nothing to look for, there's no receivable to liquidate. But the original APO journal is still there. And you just have to reclassify if you want. I mean, cash and expenditures always hit, correct? If there's an APC, then you still have an APC journal. So I think Anthony mentioned about in the beginning, there's two separate process, right? APO, AL0 will create as a GL journal regardless. Then there's another process to look for the item if they need to be liquidated. So I'm, I mean, from my understanding, so. That's correct. Uh, when your AR item processor creates these AR items yeah. if they need to. Like her question, sometimes we receive APOs, not even belong to us, or you know, like something coming in. But in our system, we don't have a receivable for that John Smith, whatever. But still, the APO hitting your cash and expenditure as a GL journal, then, then that's additional something coming. Eventually, the APC will back it out. Then eventually, whenever the APC show up, then you will be balanced again. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. So. Amy, you're absolutely correct. So we're bringing in all the items that you see in the tab run. So if you originally have an APO and then you will have an APC that we also bring in all these things. So in order to reconcile with SEO. Thank you. So what about the APOs that don't get corrected right away? Because there are times where the APCs don't get corrected within the same month. So that becomes a reconciling item for us to continue to track. And then if they don't get us the APC, normally we would submit a transaction letter. Do we need to do that now too with the new interface? Yes, you will continue to do the process um, to send a correction letter if you don't receive the APC. 
Um, so then you will inbound to, uh, when you do the um, transaction request, it will inbound to uh, Fiscal, and so your entry will be reversed. Yeah. Any more APO questions? That, that should be a benefit to departments, a little bit less work for you. There's an APO question. Portion of the APO will not have an AR to match to it. Um, then will that post portion come in as a GL journal? The answer is yes. And then can agency export this information out from Fiscal? We already keyed in all open payroll ARs into the system. So I think that they're saying that they're current in the system and they just want to export this information. Not sure for what purpose, but oh, if you are current, um, so if you have open payroll AR items already in the system, and then they will come in in that Excel sheet for you, the export that we will do for you. Thank you for clarifying that. The export for the task should be current as of when we send the task. Uh, so if you have, if you've been formulaic about your AR naming convention, you know, so if you open up uh, one of the response sheets and you're pretty formulaic about this, you should be pretty easy to fill this out. You know, one formula that just takes the, the right five digits or whatever digits you guys use, you can fill out the whole thing. Uh, if there's any pay, check for missing pay periods and then submit it. It could be a very quick task for you. Will there be any reports that will show details of transactions that did not get picked up during interface? This is one I think that uh, Carmen mentioned earlier. We're looking at a report that'll have all of the items for your reconciliation process. And then we'll, the goal would be to show you that at a town hall later date. Okay, thank you. What about those ARs recovered with leave uh, balances? There's a question, what about those ARs recovered with leave balances? ARs recovered with leave balances? Okay, we're going to need more context for this question, please. So if you could either email Fiscal CMO or um, provide more context in the Q&A chat box. Okay, are pay period and BO fields required in Fiscal, or are or are they required required fields for matching employee AR items? What if we set up an AR item without these fields? Okay, so right now they are not required. They are uh, they, most of the time BOLs left blank. It's not used, and the pay period uh, we require it for the job aid as part of the business process but it's not always entered um, for whatever reason. So tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, but when we go live with this solution, those will be required fields, the four entry reason PAR, so for all of these payroll ARs. Uh, however, between now and when we go live, you should fill those out because uh, we're going to give a task as of that date. You'll see all of your current open ones and you can correct any of them. But then after that task goes out, uh, anything entered after that, you'll need to make sure that those have it. So I'd recommend starting today, you enter your AR number in the BOL field and then make sure you're consistent in including the pay period. So right now not required as per the system, but required for the business process. And then in the, in the future, they, the system will require it. And then also, we did update Job Aid Fiscal 208 that includes this new um, screenshot and highlights the BO field for you. So for all items that you're inputting from today before go live, there you can use that um, Job Aid for guidance. Any more questions?
In order to reclass the direct journal, we need to reverse the journal lines posted by SEO Legacy, and it causes budget check error sometimes saying budget doesn't exist, is it possible to have the budget set up first in order to reclass, for the reclass to go through smoothly? Um, so setting up budgets is an ongoing process. Um, hopefully it's uh, better now that um, the budget journals are being interfaced, uh, and this has been since December, the budget journals have been interfaced from legacy to fiscal. Um, but if budgets aren't set up, then uh, it's possible that um, the departments d didn't contact uh, the commitment control team to set up those budgets in the past. Okay, thank you. When the arrow interfaces, at what level is the account coding posted at? So these will be at the high level controller's accounts. Okay, thank you. And if a payroll AR is paid in full and closed and an APO payment comes in, will it post to the AR item? So if it's full and closed, my my instinct would be no, right? Right. So uh, I would think the because the system's looking for um, an open AR item that, that matches, it would just create a GL journal in that case. Thank you. And then there is a comment to the previous question on the half sheet. For some half sheets, although the gross, gross amount is zero, there will be an amount to be recovered from the EE posted at the bottom of the half sheet. Therefore, we need to post those half sheets. So it's just a comment. There's no question. But Okay, I like those. I have a question about um, the Interface 18 file, um, will there be any updates to it to include these new required fields for PARs? So these current, currently I don't believe these fields are on the interface 18. And I know they're probably not here, but we need to know whether or not that's being planned. The six? The six. Sorry. AR6. The interface AR6. Will it be added to that particular interface from the interface team? You know, I would assume so, but we'll have to take it away and follow up with that team. You said that the ARs are going to be posted at the high level SEO um, values. If we need to reclass those to the lower levels, then would we, how, would, how would we do that? Um, so um, I don't have details for you right now, but we, we will have a business process for you. They will Thank tell you. you exactly how to do it. Okay, and then there's another online question. Uh, we have received a few TC38s AROs where a reverted year PAR was posted as non-reverted account and for fiscal year 2018 or vice versa. Will these corrections be completed prior to go live? Uh, I think that will have to be a takeaway. Okay. Thank you. Should they submit an FSC ticket for this? Yeah. Okay. So if you ask that question, can you please submit an FSC ticket? And then, uh, Eleanor, this is an old question, but going back to calculators, how we process the personal... Um, oh, the question is, how do we process the personal checks the employees return for travel advance after March? Um, so right now you do that in the travel advance administration of CalEaders. You guys already know that, right, the system. So that doesn't change. And here we do have steps that are itemized in um, university. I think they're at Fiscal University. It actually walks you through <clears throat> how to recognize that in Fiscal. Um, I'll get that. I think it's um, AP114 is the module in Fiscal University, but I'll confirm. Okay, thank you. Will APO transactions be able to successfully post partial amounts to AR items? Uh, yes, that is um, planned for the functionality. Okay. And then another calculator's question. Is there a way, 
uh, or report to check or replenishment checkbox selected or not selected for all vouchers applicable. So when prepaid vouchers are come when they come in here, um, I have to. I don't think the interface was designed for that. I'll have to double check on the ORF replenishment checkbox because that came in after the calculator's interface was built. So that interface just automatically pre-populates a prepaid voucher. It doesn't go through approval workflows. It, it automatically wants to be queued up in your department pay cycle and you issue payment, right? Um, I'll double check, but I don't think we did anything with the offer punishment checkbox. Okay, thank you. I'll mark as a takeaway. Eleanor, mm -hmm. I just wanted to clarify. So with the March 25th release, there's no change to employee paid travel advances? No. Nope. Okay. Just nope. want to clarify. Thank you. Yeah. And there's a clarification question. Will Tech 907 help update the BOL number and pay period for the parts we previously posted? Or the, do departments need to manually update these parts? No. So or yes, it will help. And no, departments don't need to manually go back to all of your open or pending items that are already there and update those. Just for what we're highly recommending for all new ones, you, can, you do that. Um, Okay, so we're going to move on to offsets. Uh, so for all unclaimed property, lottery, and personal tax offsets handled by SEO over, via TC46, so not all offsets, but just this subset of them, um, departments will see the offsets created that affect their CTS balances. And then department will need to remit and apply payments uh, per the current business process. That, that shouldn't be a change. So the process goes, Fiscal will create these offsets using the offset type O, or the deposit type O. Um, for typically today, you'll, you'll receive a sheet from FTB that has a, a list of all of these uh, offsets. There, there's not very many of them. And then you'll go in there and you'll identify these deposits, so these AR deposit, or AR items, I'm trying to mean that. These AR deposits will be created for you, and then you can go ahead and apply payments against those AR deposits. Is it SEO or FEO? Oh, it is interface that's going to be doing the deposit. Yeah, so who's creating this? This would be the interface. This would be automatic. And then you'll see that the deposit type O should be there. And then we're, we're, we're looking at a good, a good way for departments to identify which of these AR, like the AR number for these, so it can be easy to apply your payments to. All right, and then the last change for today is your CTA, CTS bank account reconciliation. Uh, there's no change to the process uh, for you guys. Just know that Fiscal, these are being generated now using Fiscal data. So you'll be able to see additional transactions on your bank statement. And this is the page that we're talking about. When you go to main menu, banking, bank statements, enter bank statement, you'll see here that uh, the statement codes, you'll, you'll see new values there. If you go and look at these, uh, you'll just notice those. I don't know if this is a common thing for departments to do. And then here is a list of all the new bank statement codes you'll see and what those descriptions are. I think we have a question. I have a question regarding the offsets. Those are you referring to FTB offsets that normally come through as an AT journal? Yes. So are, are you saying those will be automatically and we won't have to post those ATs anymore? The AR deposit will be created for you. You'll still need to apply payments. Uh, or I think for these, these are direct journaled. I don't think you're actually applying payments for these ones uh, for the most part but you'll just go and direct journal them uh, to the appropriate chart field. So that won't change, just those AR deposits will be made for you. Okay. 
So for some next steps, we haven't yet released Tech 907. When we do, you'll need to go do that. Um, it's important that that is done as accurately as possible. And then there'll be more details about that task when we send it out. Uh, you'll also see we having, what we're, what we will also be sending read 903, which is just to make sure that all of the folks who are department liaisons here or part of your uh, department you know, implementation team uh, will go and talk to the end users that are affected. Uh, it's important that the, you know, if you're an AR item processor or, you know, an AP processor, a geo processor that you know about these changes. So we're talking about managers talking to their end users. So that's what that task is for. Uh, then we've got some WebEx town halls coming up. So for Tech 907, we pretty, we went through and I showed you some of the details of the uh, response form that we're looking at right now. Uh, I will provide more information about the specific details um, and all of the little miscellaneous cases when we send the task out. So be on the lookout for that. You guys are all aware of it now. Um, it might be a holiday, so maybe Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, I think for that one, it's going to be, we're, we're still working out the best way for departments to do that, so I'm going to say that's kind of a moving target. The change discussion task is scheduled to be released on March 4th. And essentially, we just, we're just looking for a confirmation from departments that you guys have had these conversations with the, uh, the fiscal users who are affected by the change. All right, so then we have the town halls. We've got two town halls scheduled pre-go live right now. There's going, I'm a, there's going to be a few scheduled post-go live, uh, but for the pre-go live ones, February 27th and March 13th, those are both Wednesdays from 1.30 to 3.30. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. We know that not all of these changes apply to all of the people on the call. So we're going to kind of split it up into three 40-minute sections for each of these topics. Uh, so that way, it, people will have the option to attend the whole call. Uh, we'll have demonstrations. Um, we'll have more information about the calculators at, at the, as the time approaches. And then you'll be able to see some of the reports, hopefully, that uh, we're, we're making for you to make your lives easier. So highly recommend you guys tune into those. Some of the content will be the same between the two. Uh, we like to reiterate so that way everybody is aware of what the changes are. Um, and you'll have a short period of Q&A to ask the SME who's talking during that section. Corey, I have a quick comment. So one of the pieces of feedback that we heard from you guys in previous releases regarding the town halls is that you wanted more structured content. And so what we ask is, as we, you know, before, February 27th for our next town hall. If you guys can please send any questions or specific requests that you have either to the fiscal CMO mailbox, we will be monitoring that, or through your readiness coordinators, then that will help us to kind of um, collect information in terms of what are some of your pain points and what demos you want to see and things like that, and we'll try to address those. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, for feedback going forward, we've always got the you know, the fiscal CMO mailbox before we go live. Um, but we do have our fiscal coordinators now. So any discuss we're, we meet with them all the time. So any kind of uh, discussions you have or, you know, any kind of concerns you have for this release, please let them know and we'll do our best to address that. All right, so for any questions about this release specifically, so as we come up to March, you can uh, email fiscal.cmo at fiscal.ca.gov. Uh, those are, we, we will be taking the takeaways and addressing those. We'll probably address those in the town hall. Um, we will also be including any questions through the email in the town hall, so that way if one person asks a question, everybody kind of knows what that answer is. Um, if you have a question related to any of the prior releases, we don't have the October and December people in the room today. This means to answer those questions. You'll have to go to the Fiscal FSC uh, and have those questions answered through FSC. They have a, you know, their ServiceNow portal, and that's going to be your best way to get information on previous releases or functionality that we didn't discuss today. Okay, we have a couple more online questions about offsets. The offsets we received from F2B have always been posted directly to our appropriation at SCO. Will this process change with the March release? Will these offsets be deposited to our CTS starting 325 and then Fiscal will create AR deposits? 
All right. Uh, before we answer this question, we're, we, I just want to let everyone know we're going to be here for another 15 minutes. So if you want to stay uh, for more Q&A, we will be available for that. Uh, and if you want to log off or leave, you can do that as well. Um, Anthony? Okay, so I'm not the SME for this. I'm looking at you guys. Uh, my understanding is um, the offset functionality coming into the account, this is only for those ones that are already going to CTS accounts, right? The other ones will process just the way they are right now. Yep. Okay, thank you. If an ARO, APO, or APC needs correction, how should those requests be submitted? So it's like if an ARO slash APO or APC needs correction, how should those requests be submitted? Yeah. Through the GL module. Okay, and then are there instructions or a job aid for APC journal transaction entries? Okay, we'll need more uh, information around that question, so if you can please send us an email. Do we have any more questions in the audience? No. So for the APC, APO, ARO interface in, if we are not allowed to make any changes, when we have to reclass, are we required to put all the legal authorities and attach all those attachments again? Because that's a lot of work. No, no, no. So um, currently we do. That's why. Are you talking about the, uh, uh, making the correction or you're reclassifying it? No, so we're just reclassifying to a lower level. So reclassify to a low level, like we just say that we'll give you uh, more information, the instruction how we're going to do the reclassification. It's still under discussion what approach is best for the department. Okay. Thank you. Some ARs that are established are recovered by an employee choosing to cash in their leave time to repay the AR. How will these be handled? Currently, we cancel the ARs. How will we be notified to cancel the AR? So there, there will be a different business process for that later on, and we'll communicate that once we finalize the process. That's it for online questions at this time. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and end our session now. Uh, thank you all for coming, and thank you, everybody online, for tuning in. We will post a recording of this online on the SEO Integrated Solution page. Thank you. And anybody who hasn't signed in, please sign in the sign-in sheets. Thank you.